You know, I should probably preface the following rant with some kind of trite, self-aggrandizing quasi-apology, like This is a video I really didn't want to have to make. But that would be a total lie, because at heart I'm a petty and vindictive man, and this is a video I very much wanted to make. I've been wanting to make it ever since I slogged my way through to the final episode of the steaming pile of dog shit that is Westworld Season 3, and came face to face with the horrifying realization that those are 8 hours of my life that I'll never get back. The only time I want to lose 8 hours is when I wake up the following morning in my bathtub with an empty bottle of gin in one hand and a midget stripper in the other. Anyway, enough about me, I'm here to rant about Westworld, so grab your industrial strength lube because these delights are going to be decidedly violent. This show has become a fucking ludicrous, boring, obscene parody of its original self, a plodding, pointless, pompous, patronizing, pretentious pile of crap, constantly striving towards grandiose ideas that it has neither the creative intelligence nor the artistic merit to properly explore, populated with characters that generate all the sympathy and interest of a cardboard cutout of Jeremy Renner, sorry Jeremy, and laced with so many obnoxious, mean-spirited political undertones that I honestly expected Brie Larson to flounce her way into the scene. In short, it fucking sucks. I'd like to say this revelation came as quite the shock to me, but that would be yet another lie. The writing was on the wall ever since season 2 stumbled through its convoluted story arc, and things have only gotten worse this season. So join me as I try to make sense of how and why it went so horribly wrong. The story kicks off when strong female character Dolores extorts money and information from a corrupt white man who once visited Westworld, and uses it to infiltrate a technology company run by another corrupt white man. This company invented a giant metal testicle that can predict the actions of every human being on Earth and uses that information to keep the human race from destroying itself. Anyway, Dolores seduces the corrupt white man, but it turns out he doesn't actually have access to the metal testicle, which makes him an incompetent corrupt white man taking credit for other people's work. Of course. But then his evil white henchman uncovers her deception and tries to murder her, so she kills him and a bunch of other white men, and 3D prints a replacement copy of him to act as a mole in the company, which she totally knew she was going to need because she's somehow able to predict the outcome of complex events with multiple variables that she has absolutely no control over. Because she's that damn good. This confrontation brings her in contact with a dumb, downtrodden white man named Caleb, who she allows to help her even though she totally doesn't need his help. Caleb then spends the rest of the season following her around like a lost puppy dog, and never takes any independent action of his own because that sort of thing is reserved for the ladies of this show only. Meanwhile, strong diverse female character number one, Maeve, wakes up in World War II and fights a bunch of evil white Nazi men, only to find out the whole thing was a simulation created by an evil white French man who also has a control unit that prevents her from turning against him. Well, sure hope she doesn't learn how to override that thing when the plot needs a cheap and easy way to get her out of trouble. So evil white French man orders Maeve to hunt down Dolores and her followers and kill them all, because I guess the hundreds of special forces operatives under his command just aren't enough to get the job done. Although considering how none of them even understand how guns work, I'm not too surprised surprised by this. <laughs> don't know what you're doing there, mate. At the same time, strong, diverse female character number two, Charlotte, infiltrates Delos and takes control of the company from evil white man in black, then puts him into a mental asylum so he can be punished and humiliated forever. Then she goes home to her fake family and murders an evil white man who was trying to prey on her fake kid, and for some reason she becomes mentally unstable from pretending to be the woman she's impersonating. Can't say I blame her, to be honest. If I had to wake up and see this face, every time I looked in the mirror, I'd be pretty unstable too. <laughs> Anyway, she hacks into the mainframe at Delos and sends a bunch of classified information to Dolores. Then evil white Frenchman blows her up with a car bomb. This was immensely satisfying to watch. 
but for some reason she survives and blames Dolores and decides to take revenge so that the rest of the plot can happen. Meanwhile, Dolores kidnaps corrupt, incompetent white man to get information from him, and Bernard and Stubbs shamble in to stop her, but they're not stunning or brave enough, so Dolores totally kicks their asses and escapes with corrupt, incompetent white man. Then he gets murdered because I guess he deserved it for being rich and corrupt. His information leads Dolores to another giant metal testicle, so it can give them the plans to defeat the first giant metal testicle, which basically amounts to, tell it to delete itself. Genius! <laughs> Then Maeve shows up dressed as a ninja because she spent like 5 minutes in Shogun World and decides that that makes her a samurai now. Everyone can be whatever they want to be, you see. Then these two strong female characters have a fight to see which of them is the strongest strong female character. But Maeve has the edge because she's more diverse, so Dolores sets off an EMP that kills them both and shuts down the giant metal testicle. But then Dolores and Maeve download into new bodies, which renders their previous fight totally pointless. I love that Dolores totally predicted that Caleb would have the knowledge, expertise and opportunity to recover her memory core from her dead body and plug it into the replacement body she had on standby. That's fucking jigsaw levels of forward planning right there. So I guess it's time for the finale to happen. Everyone converges on the other giant metal testicle and our two strong female characters have another fight because nothing's more thrilling than watching two actresses that can barely fight going through some awkwardly choreographed moves that require about a dozen jump cuts apiece to make them look not ridiculous. And I know this is nitpicking but can someone please explain why they visibly breathe hard and grunt when they get hit? You're robots, you can't even feel pain, never mind get physically tired. Anyway, this time Dolores powers up her white privilege and wins the fight, but then flame grilled Charlotte projects into her head and shuts Dolores down remotely so the evil white French man can capture her. Fuck off, Tessa Thompson. Then they plug her into the giant metal testicle so they can get important information from her robot brain. And honestly, so many people have been trying to extract so many bits of encrypted information to keep this plot moving that I kind of lost track of what they actually needed from her. But anyway, Maeve uses her special robot telepathy to get inside Dolores' head and they have a chat about how they've both been manipulated by evil white men their whole lives. Then Dolores dies and Maeve wakes up and kills evil white French man and Caleb tells the giant metal testicle to delete itself so it can't control the world anymore and Maeve leads him outside like another puppy dog so they can watch as the world burns and I guess it's kind of like the ending to Fight Club, except without the compelling characters and emotional journey to get us there. And that's it, that's the fucking ridiculous, disastrous storyline of Westworld Season 3. You know, if I had to describe this show with one word, my word would be repetition. There's barely enough story here to fill two episodes, so the rest of the season is bulked out with frustrating busy work and recycling the same story beats again and again, such as kidnapping someone to get important information information that leads to the next plot point, infiltrating a building to get access to information that leads to the next plot point, interrogating someone to get information that leads to the next plot point, manipulating someone to get information that leads to the next plot point. Jesus, how many times do we have to see someone hacking into some corporate server or stealing some random encryption key or downloading some really important memory files or re-downloading a host into a new body for like the fifth time? It's just the same contrived techno babble bullshit over and over again. New objectives and motivations get dumped into the story with no setup, context, or any sense of how they fit into the larger narrative. The result is that you never really understand what anyone is trying to accomplish at any given moment, and pretty soon you stop caring. Just like a good J.J. Abrams movie, you're not supposed to stop and question anything that's happening, because if you do, then you'll start to see the very flimsy string holding the whole thing together. But drinker, you inebriated procrastinator, I hear you say. What's about my themes? This show addresses complex questions about the nature of free will and the dangers of sacrificing it in the name of security and stability. It's cleverly ironic that the humans who use intelligent machines for their pleasure and gratification are themselves ruled over by even more intelligent machines. Well, that's definitely shite. <laughs> 
These ideas are neither smart nor original, and as I've said before, an idea is only as good as its execution, and in this case, Westworld fails to grapple with the complex philosophical questions it wants to address, because it's incapable of taking a balanced view on anything. Wouldn't it be interesting if we got to see the positive aspects of the control that the giant metal testicle is able to exert on the world? Wouldn't it be interesting if we were shown how this machine actually brings peace and prosperity to humanity? So that destroying it becomes a difficult moral question that challenges both the characters and the viewers assumptions about what they value the most. But nah, let's just take the easy route. Machines bad, freedom good. But it's not just the plot that falls on its arse here. The characters, which used to be one of the big strengths of this show, have been absolutely devastated. In my season 2 review, I pointed out that most of the best male characters had either been killed off or neutered by the end of the season in favour of stunningly brave, overpowered and completely unlikable female replacements. But holy crap, none of that could have prepared me for what happens here. This show absolutely revels in depicting corrupt white men getting punished by righteous, empowered and preferably diverse women. And I mean constantly, to the point that I'm actually starting to think the writers have some kind of sadomasochistic fetish going on. Every single male character in this show is depicted as corrupt, greedy, weak, pathetic, malicious, incompetent, or some combination thereof. And every single one of them has to meet his end at the hands of a vengeful, morally justified female character. Jesus Christ, even fucking Clementine gets brought back from the dead just so she can kill someone. You go, girl. Remember the man in black? Remember how he went from a smart, sinister, dangerous, and ruthless antagonist in season one to a dumb, incompetent, whiny moron in season two? Well, now he's been reduced to absolutely nothing at all. Just a broken shell of a man, beaten and outplayed by his strong female adversary. What a fucking waste of an amazing actor. Ed Harris is the kind of guy that could make eating a bowl of cornflakes look compelling, and his presence gave the first season some much needed gravitas. But now he's completely neutered, prevented from influencing the story in any way, and then he gets killed in a post credit scene of all things, just to add insult to injury. <laughs> Fuck off, show. Remember Bernard? Well, that's good because the writers certainly don't. His entire character arc this season is to wander around aimlessly from place to place, looking shocked and being about 10 steps behind his female counterparts. Stubbs, played by the least talented of the Hemsworth brothers, is brought back for no other reason than to get his ass handed to him by Dolores. Because, you know, why would a man specifically trained in security and combat be expected to hold his own in a fight? Yes, I can definitely smell shite. <laughs> in my review of the first episode, I predicted that Caleb would be a useless whipping boy that gets dragged around by Dolores for the entire season, and in a shocking turn of events, I was 100% right. I just want it to go on record that I fucking called it. This man literally doesn't take a single independent decision throughout the entire season. Everything he does, everywhere he goes, everything he learns and experiences comes entirely because because of Dolores. Even his final decision to shut down the giant metal testicle was predicted before any of this even began. There is literally no point in this man even existing. Serac, the evil white Frenchman, was the only one with a tiny spark of potential. Holy shit, I thought. A male character that's smart, capable, and able to outthink his female counterparts? A ruthless and calculating man with a tragic backstory, willing to do bad things in the name of a noble cause? What in Sanity is this, Westworld? But then the script is like, ha ha, gotcha! He's been under the control of the giant metal testicle the whole time, so he's not actually smart or capable at all. Can't have those dumb men getting ideas above their station, can we? And of course, he gets his comeuppance courtesy of a diverse female character. This show is so utterly predictable, you can set your watch by it. Again, I bring you back to my previous point about repetition. Showing a strong female female character freeing herself from enslavement by her malicious male overlords and taking revenge against them is perfectly fine as a story element, but when literally every single character arc in your show is just a variation of the same exact idea, well, 
it starts to get pretty fucking annoying. Now, since all the men are basically useless inconveniences for the writers, season 3 focuses instead on the conflict between Maeve and Dolores. And in theory, this sounds like a pretty good idea. Imagine two sympathetic, morally just characters with the potential to do incredible things who should have been friends and allies, but instead get forced down diverging paths by circumstances beyond their control, leading to vastly differing ideas about how they want to reshape the world. And ultimately, they're compelled to settle their differences in a tragic final conflict that neither of them really wanted. That's not bad. You could weave a pretty compelling story around a concept like that, presenting two completely opposing worldviews that each have merit, and forcing the audience to make difficult moral judgments on which one they ultimately agree with. But all of that amazing storytelling potential depends on one thing, delivering two characters that people actually like. And this is where Westworld really falls apart, shitting out two of the most unlikable, antagonistic, unsympathetic blocks of wood that have ever been planted in front of a TV camera. Which overpowered how Howard Mary Sue did you root for? The cold, callous, arrogant, manipulative murderer bent on destroying the world? Or the smug, arrogant, dismissive mercenary who doesn't give a shit about it? And I can't help but ask, why? Why did the writers choose to make them this way? Why did they give them such awful personalities that nobody could possibly like? Did they set out to create fundamentally unlikable protagonists that the audience would actively cheer against? Or is this what they think people actually want in their strong, empowered feelings? female characters? Or are they just useless hacks that literally don't understand how to write characters at all? I'll let you decide. The final episode teases further adventures and conflicts between our stunningly brave characters, but honestly, I can't imagine how anyone but the most die-hard of fans would be willing to stick with this show now. Westworld has effectively destroyed, trampled and neutered everything that once made it so original and unique, ultimately becoming just another generic futuristic thriller with ideas and aspirations far in excess of the writer's abilities. Just another sad entry in the long list of one promising IPs let down by the hubris, incompetence and divisive politics of its creators. I know their pride and egos won't allow them to learn from this experience, but hopefully audiences will, and they'll vote with their wallets to shut down this crap for good. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.